Because when back at ease gets to the village of Modi'in, and he forces the Jewish people there to sacrifice pork on the altar, or I'm going to slit your throats in front of your family, Matthias and his six sons instead attacked Bacchides and his guards and killed them instead. He'd had enough. Instead of attacking the countryside, the people that probably couldn't defend themselves and probably weren't really the root of the problem, but no doubt faced kind of the brunt of anger in order to kind of release some pressure you know you you can't attack the government you can only attack this person here which in your way because they're following the rules of the government represent the government represent what's wrong with being jewish so matthias and his sons attacked and killed bacchidi and his guards rather than sacrifice pork on the altar rather than watch the village of Modi'in get destroyed. And Matthias and his sons, you know, you can imagine this being done in the heat of the moment, and then standing around going, well, what the heck do we do now? We just killed the governor. There's a whole army that was just fighting the Romans. Just a few decades ago, there's a whole army that just slaughtered the Egyptian army just a few years ago. We're only six people. So Matthias and his sons run into the countryside to hide and hope that this whole thing blows over. Now this is where things get really interesting. Because now, Modin and his sons... Even though they're on the run, the story is told to us that people from Modin and the surrounding lands, instead of just kind of waiting in fear for the inevitable retribution to come their way, realize, well, win for a penny, we're in for a pound now. So the people go to Modin and his sons, or pardon me, go to Matthias and his sons, and ask them to help raise an army and lead a rebellion. We're all dead anyways. We might as well fight back rather than just sit and wait for it to come. Now, Matthias, he was already an old man. He dies shortly afterwards, and he leaves his son, a guy by the name of Judas Maccabeus, this is where we get the Maccabean revolt from in the Maccabee family, Judas Maccabeus. He leaves Judas in charge with his brothers there to support him. Judas is, you know, facing off against the might of the Seleucid Empire, and he's got basically a few hundred people, men, women, Children wouldn't be really women, maybe in some cases, who knows, mostly men. He's got that to fight the entirety of the Seleucids. Now, there isn't a giant force of Seleucid people in the countryside. In fact, there's quite a small version of it. And Judas is pretty good or at least he finds out that he's pretty good at fighting a guerrilla warfare. Judas is able to drive out the uh, governor of Jerusalem, Epiphanius, and retake the city, or at least take the city, because there's not really a Seleucid force there, in the name of his family. And there kind of ideals of what it means to be Jewish is now suddenly he's in a position to kind of enforce that to reject the Seleucids reject Bacchides reject the laws of Antiochus 
So Judas is able with his family to cleanse them, rededicate the temple. There's a citadel there kind of attached to the temple. It's not quite clear where it is or isn't. But he takes that. However, Antiochus has an army. And according to the Wars of the Jews, it's 50,000 infantry, 5,000 cavalry, and about 50 elephants are sent into Judea to go and put down this revolt that's happened. Antiochus is getting serious. And Judas, you know, obviously he does not have an army that's 50,000 strong, pardon me, 55,000 strong, and he does not have any elephants. This is a guerrilla fighting force. These are not trained soldiers. But there is a famous battle it's in a lot of medieval art, actually, the scene. Judas's brother, Eleazar, he charges an elephant, which he thinks Antiochus is on, charges through the Seleucid army, and spears the elephant from beneath. The elephant falls on him and crushes him. Now, if you look up the... the uh, um, Eleazar Maccabee in medieval art, you will find a few uh, medieval arts that have no idea what an elephant looks like. Because, of course, these are people that live in Europe, you know, Britain, France, all those places. They've never seen an elephant. So they're going off the description of what an elephant looks like in the uh, books of the Maccabees and the Wars of the Jews by Josephus, which would have been a book that a lot of early Christians or medieval Christians knew of, the nobility. So there, you can see a lot of weird drawings of people trying to figure out what an elephant looks like, and it looks pretty humorous. So look that up. You can see um, Eleazar Maccabee attacking Antiochus and his elephant. And you'll, you'll find some funny, uh, funny art from the medieval period about this. But Judas loses this battle. And Judas later tries to attack Antiochus at his camp. You know, this is more guerrilla tactics, not being successful in open warfare. And Judas is killed in this battle. And Judas' other brother, a guy by the name of John, is also killed in battle a few days later. So within a few days, three of the sons of uh, Matthias are dead. John, Eleazar, and the leader of the rebellion, Judas. 